In the history of aviation, there are moments that can truly be called turning points. They open up unexplored horizons and make us think about how far human ambition and engineering thought can go. But what if one of the most exciting and unusual episodes in the development of aviation began completely by accident, with a flight that no one had planned? This flight became a turning point, not only for aviation, but for the entire space industry. It marked the moment when a person, without official astronaut status, found themselves beyond Earth's atmosphere, breaking all predictions and assumptions about the limits of the possible. And although it was an accidental journey into space, its consequences were felt for decades. Want to know how this happened and what records were set during this unique program? Share your opinion and support the channel with a like and subscribe so you don't miss the amazing facts waiting for you in the next video. The X-15 project was developed as part of a US research program aimed at studying flight at hypersonic speeds and beyond the atmosphere. The primary objective was to gather data necessary for the creation of advanced spacecraft and hypersonic aircraft. This project was seen as a stepping stone for the development of the suborbital hypersonic bomber X-20 Dinosaur, which was expected to be the next step in the evolution of aviation and astronautics. The idea of creating the X-15 emerged in the early 1950s when the US Air Force, in collaboration with NASA, began developing the concept of an aircraft capable of reaching record-breaking speeds and altitudes. In 1954, the project was approved, outlining the basic requirements for the design and capabilities of the future aircraft. A significant part of the program focused on studying the behavior of the aircraft at the edge of the atmosphere, the effects of space radiation on the pilot and equipment, testing manual control systems in a rarefied atmosphere, and evaluating new heat-resistant protective coatings. The X-15 was developed by North American Aviation, a company with vast experience in creating high-speed aircraft. A key feature of the project was the use of a powerful rocket engine, enabling the vehicle to reach speeds previously unattainable by piloted aircraft. A critical aspect of the program was the capability for controlled re-entry and landing, which set the X-15 apart from most other rocket systems of its time. What materials were used in the construction of the X-15's fuselage, and why were these specific materials chosen? The X-15 was designed as a rocket plane capable of reaching altitudes of up to 100 kilometers and speeds of up to 7,200 kilometers per hour. Its design was developed with consideration of the extreme thermal loads encountered during hypersonic flights. The fuselage was made from heat-resistant alloys, such as Inconel X, titanium, and alloyed steel, allowing it to withstand temperatures up to 650 degrees Celsius. The aircraft's wings had a multi-frame structure made of titanium and covered with Inconel X sheathing, providing the necessary strength and protection against overheating. The primary propulsion system of the X-15 was the XLR-99 rocket engine, which ran on liquid oxygen and ammonia. This engine had a thrust of about 27 tons and allowed for power adjustment depending on the flight requirements. The X-15's landing gear had an unusual design. The front strut was two-wheeled, and instead of traditional rear struts, skis were used. During flight, the landing gear was retracted, and upon landing, the skis were deployed under the force of gravity. For control at high altitudes, a system of reaction nozzles was used, while in denser layers of the atmosphere, the plane was controlled by aerodynamic surfaces and movable rudders. To ensure the pilot's safety, the X-15 cockpit was airtight but not fully autonomous, so pilots wore spacesuits. A special system for supplying heated nitrogen prevented fogging and icing of the windshield improving visibility during landing. What X-15 record remains unbeaten among manned aircraft to this day? During the X-15 program, 199 flights were made, with 12 pilots participating. Among them was Neil Armstrong, who conducted several missions on the X-15 before his flight to the moon. The aircraft set a speed record among manned vehicles, reaching Mach 6.7, which is 8,200 kilometers per hour, the question of how many times the X-15 reached space remains debated. The U.S. Air Force defines the boundary of space at an altitude of 80.5 kilometers, 
according to which the X-15 made 13 space flights. The International Aeronautical Federation sets the boundary at 100 kilometers, meaning the aircraft crossed this threshold twice. NASA defines space starting at 122 kilometers, and according to their classification, the X-15 never entered outer space. In addition to its altitude and speed records, the X-15 played a crucial role in studying the aerodynamics of hypersonic vehicles, space radiation, and the effects of G-forces on pilots. The unique data collected during the flights contributed to the development of ballistic missiles and the first American spacecraft. How was it possible for one person to cross the space boundary twice, even before official manned space programs? The first flight of the X-15 took place on June 8, 1959. Throughout the program, numerous tests were conducted, including studies on aerodynamic stability, thermal loads, and maneuverability at high altitudes. Neil Armstrong, the future first man on the moon, made several flights in the X-15 between 1960 and 1962, testing the manual control systems and the vehicle's behavior in rarefied atmosphere conditions. One of the most significant flights was that of Joseph Albert Walker, February 20th, 1921, June 8th, 1966, a NASA test pilot. Walker was the first person to go into space twice, performing two suborbital flights by international classification, above 100 kilometers in altitude, as well as another flight exceeding 50 miles, which is considered the boundary of space by the U.S. Air Force's classification. On August 22, 1963, he set a record altitude for piloted aircraft, 107.96 kilometers. This record remained unbroken for more than 40 years until it was surpassed on October 4, 2004. Walker remains the only pilot to have flown the X-15 above the Karman line twice, officially reaching space. Additionally, the X-15 program conducted important experiments with ultraviolet and infrared sensors, providing valuable data on the upper layers of the atmosphere. What caused the pilot, who had flown the X-15 into space, to be in mortal danger during a collision with the XB-70? How would the course of space exploration have changed if the tragedy involving the F-104 Starfighter had not occurred, allowing the X-15 pilot to continue his experiments in space? On June 8, 1966, during a group flight, an aviation accident occurred in which the pilot of an F-104 Starfighter was killed. His plane entered a turbulent airstream, collided with the tail of the experimental XB-70 Valkyrie, and crashed. Interestingly, the name of this pilot is missing from the Space Mirror at the Kennedy Space Center. Instead, the name of Michael Adams, the pilot of the X-15, is memorialized. Adams flew to an altitude of only 81 kilometers in November 1967 and died in a crash. This flight is not considered suborbital according to the standards of the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale, FAI unlike the flights of Walker, who reached altitudes over 100 kilometers. However, the Space Mirror includes the names of astronauts who did not even complete suborbital flights and who died during training in the same years. Nevertheless, Walker, the only pilot who actually took the X-15 into space, is not on this list. The X-15 program was a true milestone in the history of aviation and space exploration, showcasing the incredible capabilities of both humans and technology. These experimental flights not only set records, but also laid the groundwork for future space research. Despite its brevity, the X-15 program played a crucial role in understanding the behavior of aircraft at altitudes where the atmosphere becomes so thin that conventional aerodynamic laws lose their effect. These studies, in turn, opened new horizons for the development of modern spacecraft, ballistic missile technologies, and hypersonic aircraft. Although the X-15 program was not part of the official manned space missions of its time, its significance in history cannot be overstated. Interesting facts, records, unparalleled technologies, and human determination, all of this is tied to the X-15 program, which left a deep mark in the history of aviation and space exploration. 
Subscribe to the channel to not miss the next exciting stories about the great events that change the world.